AP Computer Science Principles. Whether you took it as a GPA boost or because you're actually interested in computer science, it doesn't matter because you're taking the test at the end of the year and you're taking this class. So let's watch this video so you can learn how to get an A in your class and how to get a five on the exam in the easiest way possible. <laughs> What is up guys, my name is Rafael um, and I make videos here on YouTube talking about finance, my daily life and the experiences that I've gone through. AP CSP is one of my experiences. I took this class in 10th grade as a sophomore at my school and earned a five and, and, and an A in all, of my, in all of the semesters and scored a six out of six on the create task. Now, if I'm gonna be completely honest, AP Computer Science Principles is the hardest AP I've ever taken. But um, yeah, so you can take either AP Computer Science Principles or AP CSA. AP CSA, which is AP Computer Science A, is a lot harder. And the reason why is because you're doing purely programming. So you're learning all about the programming of Java versus AP CSA, which is uh, so AP CSP, which is Computer Science Principles, which is where you go into a lot more breadth, but much less depth. You just need to know the basics, basically. You're covering everything that there is to know about computers. So you basically have to know everything there is about computers, but not really because you can't learn everything. So you're gonna learn very, very, you're, you're gonna only touch the surface. And half of this class, you're probably gonna be preparing for your create task. Now you might be asking, what is the create task? The create task is worth 30% of your final AP exam score. And it's basically measuring how well you can create a uh, a certain software such as a game or app and it's testing your ability to read the rubric essentially because as long as you're as long as you're following the rubric you can earn six out of six points on this fairly easy with the create task you don't actually need an amazing program you just need a program that's gonna fill the rubric for the reader. You want your grader to, you want the grader, you want to give the grader an easy time while doing this project because you don't want your grader to spend a long time looking for points to give you. You want them, you want it to make it clear that what you have is deserve, deserves the points that you want to get. And for this create task, a lot, not a lot of people know this, but you actually have a written response. So as long as your written response has the same vocabulary as the rubric, then it's a lot easier for them to find to, to find where they should give you the points. Hence, you're earning more points. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about words like input, output. So things you put into the program, things you get out of the program. Functionality, um, having a list that stores user data and using it for a certain purpose, making sure that a list is managing complexity and definitely a few other things such as, such as having a function and uh, having, having again, having a list that manages complexity and you describing how that list is managing complexity. So just have the rubric next to you when you are working on the create task and I promise you, you're on your way to a five already. So now it's May or preferably April when you're days away or months away or weeks away from your end of course exam. Now, to be completely honest, 80% of your final score, or I would say 60 to 80% is already determined by the things you've already learned in class. A lot of the stuff that you learned in class, they're gonna test you on obviously, but that, that doesn't mean that you cannot learn everything again now. That just means it will take more effort for you to learn everything. So the best advice I could give you to get a five on the, this end of course exam is just to study throughout the whole year, you know? When your teacher gives you homework, just do the homework. When your teacher assigns you work, just do the work so you don't have to study as much at the end of the year. But it's the end of the year, right? For you maybe, and you might be a little anxious. So obviously some preparation will help you. So I think Khan Academy is the best for um, making sure your concepts are, are where they need to be and making sure that you don't have any faults. A big thing with the college, with a big thing with APs is you have to make sure that every single concept that you learn, that you learn it the right way. You have to make sure that every, that you don't have anything that you're misinterpreting or that you don't necessarily understand because that will cause you to miss a lot of points on the AP exam. So you always wanna go back and check the content to make sure that you know the content 100% dead cold. And then it's really up to just practicing. Imagine you are in a soccer match if you're in a soccer match, you're not gonna. The person who does the best in a soccer match isn't the person who knows all the rules of the game. It's the person who has all the skills. So you need to make sure that you've been doing some practice tests before this test. So where can you find some practice tests? 
you can find the, some practice tests on the Princeton Review book that's actually available in Z Library for free. Z Library is this website. I don't know if it's legal or not, but it has a bunch of books that you can go see. Just just pointing it out. And um, you can also take some other practice tests that come from the question bank of the official uh, college board questions. Um, and that your teacher needs to unlock for you, but you can definitely ask her at the end of the year for those, if she can give some of those tests. Um, and I think she will definitely say because it will help you as well as her because it will be improving your guys' scores. But these tests, I'm telling you, these questions are just like the actual AP exam. So if you can get these, then, then try to get them. Don't try to look for any third party resources only only use third party when you have to right you want to stay as close to using ap material because that's the material that you're going to be tested on you don't want to learn something for no reason right so you have to make sure that uh, all the concepts that you're learning that they fit that they fit what your curriculum is teaching you and you can always check the course and exam description available and just there's some actual practice questions there where you can get some more there and you can also take a look at what you need to learn so that wh wherever you're learning your material, you can verify that what you're learning is what you need to learn. Some other things I recommend is paying attention to the safety of, of the safety of the person when, when using computers. They talk a lot about ethics in this course and a big thing is how you relate to computers. So for example, if you're talking about how, if you're talking about how there's a lot of more, uh, how a lot of, Websites are use, are using cookies or are using um, different are, are using different ways of, are getting different ways of getting your your information. Then there, that probably means that the college board is testing you on privacy because anything that can affect your safety is a risk to yourself and hence should be avoided. So a big thing is always making sure that the person themselves are safe. So when you're answering these questions, you always have to make sure what is something what you have to always have to make sure that your answer choice um is part of something safe for the user that you're never you're never making the user at risk uh and another thing that's important is learning the differences between different um between different hacks and viruses so what i mean by like i mean more like security breaches so for example like key logging um and malware you need to know the differences between those things you can't just call everything a virus because there are different terms for different thing for different types of viruses on your computer, and um, yeah, that's basically about it. I basically learned. I basically forgot everything uh, that I learned the past year already. So in terms of content, um, I think you'll you just have to learn it for the AP test, and it's very easy to understand. Um, yeah. Anyways, just don't worry about this test. Uh, just try to give it as much time as possible, but don't stress about it for sure. Uh, I think you're gonna, you guys are gonna do great, and uh, let me know how you guys do at the end of the year. Um, anyways, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later. Check out my other videos, please. Thank you.